Hello everyone, this is Mario. Welcome to my channel and to stage 14 of La Vuelta 2019 in Pro Cycling Manager. So we're coming to this one after a few stages where we have a bit of a roller coaster of emotions. We come from stage 11 where Alejandro Valverde nearly got the win, but uh, a late attack by Woodpools uh, stole it from him. Then on stage 12, Valverde did really well and managed to close the gap by almost one minute to Primoz Roglic. So it was a really strong performance and he also took the stage win there. But then on the previous one, stage 13, which finished uh, at the top of Los Machucos, Alejandro Valverde was not having the best day of his life and he really struggled uh, towards the end of the climb but he still managed to hang on and not lose time to Primoz Roglic. So it was a tough day, but it ended up not going as bad as it could. So today we expect a relatively quiet stage. It's mostly flat. There are, of course, a few hills. This is La Vuelta, so you need to have a few hills during the stage. 186.7 kilometers connecting San Vicente de la Barquera to Oviedo, there is a single categorized climb today, a category 3 one, so only three points. I won't take Mark Soler in the breakaway for this one for only three points, but I do plan to put one of my riders in the breakaway so that they can challenge for the win in the case the peloton isn't interested in the win. Of course, I really don't believe that's going to happen. I think that the teams with sprinters are going to try to go for this one, and surprisingly, Alejandro Valverde is being considered as the top favorite for this stage. I would say that it's mostly because of the false flat we have in the, in the finish line. I don't think it's significant to prevent the sprinters from winning the stage, but let's see how this goes. And so the riders are now departing from San Vicente de Barquera. And today, I really feel that... Um, Pro Cycling Manager is having a laugh at me, because in the previous day I had Alejandro Valverde on a minus one race day condition, and today, where I don't really need that, is on a plus two race day condition, so yeah, that's really helpful. So as I said, I'm going to put one of my riders in the breakaway, I'm going with Jorge Arcas, it's going to be the second time he's on the breakaway in this La Vuelta, he has a quite good well it's not a good sprint stat actually other riders in the breakaway have a much better sprint stat than him but uh, besides Valverde and Rojas is the best rider I have to challenge for a sprint so if this group gets to the end in the front he will try to challenge for the win and I, of course, could go with Rojas today in the breakaway. He's having a plus two race day condition. But since he already took a stage win in stage eight, I won't uh, take him on the breakaway this time. And I will try to give a chance to another one of my riders to take a stage win. And so today, with roughly 40 kilometers completed in this stage, we have a 10 riders group in the front of the race. They are currently about four minutes ahead of the peloton. And in this group, besides our rider Jorge Arcas, we have Pavel Bernas, uh, Kuznetsov, Wayne Duhl, Tomas Marczynski, Jetzebol, Cyril Bart, Jens Stannard, Thomas de Gent, and Jonas Kosh. So it's uh, an interesting group, quite a few riders that can do well in the flat so it might be useful. Um, in the beginning I said I was putting Arkash in the breakaway because of his kind of, I cannot say strong sprint stat, uh, but not the worst in my team. But actually there are plenty other riders, most of them actually, who have um, a better sprint stat than Jorge Arkash. So yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to win the stage even if this breakaway group goes to the end of the stage in front of the peloton.
And so we are now about, oh, this is a significant fall. We are about 80 kilometers from the finish line. And one of my riders, Pedrero, fell. Oh, ah, okay, he's not abandoning the race. I was fearing the worst. Uh, let's see if he can come back to the peloton. I hope he can. It's a shame that he dropped from this group here, but he will catch them and return to the peloton, I think, without too much trouble. In the meantime, the riders in the front went uh, through the intermediate sprint. I didn't really see you got the points there, but it's not really important. At the moment, this group now only has nine riders. Uh, one of them, Jonas Kosh, uh, fell a few kilometers before, so I don't think he's going to be able to get back to the front. And even if he does, he will be completely exhausted. Oh, and no, Jorge Arcas had a puncture. So, yeah, I, I cannot win the stage now with him. Yeah, I will just drop him back because even if, well, let's, let's try it for a bit. Try to see if I can get to the front, but I think I will simply waste so much energy trying to do this. I think I will just drop him. So guys, as you can see, I changed my mind. I kept Arkash in this group, but he's really short of energy at the moment. So I don't think he's going to be able to survive. So let's focus now in my main riders in the peloton. We are now on this category three climb uh, or approaching it. Apparently it hasn't officially started yet, uh, but they are already going a bit uphill. So let's try to keep my riders here at the front of the peloton and not be surprised. Arkas is really struggling to keep the pace. We are now five kilometers from the top of that climb. I will try to increase the effort a bit with him to try to hang on, but he's not going to be able to do this. I don't think he's going to be able. Let's see, he's in the back of this group and any big push and he's going to be dropped. And that's exactly what's happening now. They are pushing hard. So Arkas is just about to be dropped from the breakaway group. And yeah, I will just ask him to wait for uh, my leaders and he can just rest for the remaining of the stage. And so uh, at the moment, Tadej Pogacar is the rider forcing the pace at the front of the peloton. I'm sure it's because uh, Team Emirates wants Fernando Gaviria to take the stage, but it's a bit weird that their GC leader is the one pacing. Um, we now have Gregor Mulberger and riders from Bora Ansgrove pacing for Sam Bennett. So I will try to put now Oh, no, no, this did not happen. This did not just happen. Oh, my, I, I cannot believe this. Alejandro Valverde has fallen. He's still here, but I need to wait with Rojas and Mark Soler for him. Oh, no, I cannot believe this. But actually, Primus Roglic is in the same group as Valverde. No, he's now a bit more to the front. But I need to pace with him. And now let me... Why aren't they waiting harder? Come on. Come on, guys. Oh, I need to put Valverde on the wheel of Rojas now and force the pace to the front. I need to bring him back. Well, actually, we're safe. We're safe. Okay. No big deal. Everyone important is here. But let's try to get... Um, Valverde to the front, being pulled by um, Rojas. So yeah, everything is fine, but I think, yeah, the peloton is not going to take the stage. It's going for the riders in the breakaway. They are three minutes ahead, only three kilometers, 3.5 for them to finish the stage. And uh, in the peloton, we are now um, five kilometers from the finish line. So let's still try to pace a bit with, with Rojas um, so that I can sprint in the end with Valverde so that he can get a few points. Let's put Quintana and Soler in automatic, actually. Let's force the pace now with Rojas. Let's go 99 with him. And I will start sprinting now. Let's see who is going to take the stage win. And it's 
Ian Stannard. Yes, it's Ian Stannard taking the stage win. And now let's sprint with Alejandro Valverde and Rojas. Oh, this was too soon. I thought we were closer, but no one else is. Oh, no one else is sprinting with, with Valverde. And Valverde is the first one from the peloton. He's seventh in the stage, followed by Fernando Gaviria and then Primoz Roglic and Luca Mezgek. I don't think this is going to be counted as a gap. But yeah, I kind of missed the start of the sprint. I did it too early, but no one else tried to follow Valverde and he was the first one from the peloton. And so Ian Stannard takes the win from the breakaway ahead of, I think, Thomas de Ghent, or was it Thomas Marcinski? I don't recall now. And it was indeed Ian Stannard ahead of Thomas de Ghent and a bit further behind Pavel Bernas finishing in third. And I think this is the third win for Team Ineos. They, if I'm not mistaken, won the Stage 1 Team Time Trial and then Voodpools took Stage 11. So in the GC, there were, yeah, as I expected, no gaps uh, between Valverde and Roglic. Valverde is still one minute and eight behind Primoz Roglic. But yeah, this could have been much more complicated if Valverde lost some time after falling. There were no changes, of course, in the mountain classification, with Mikel Nieve still three points ahead of Marc Soler. In the points classification, Valverde increased his lead again uh, towards Primoz Roglic, 14 points ahead of the Slovenian rider now. And the lead of the best young rider classification is still from the Team Emirates leader, Tadej Pogacar, ahead of Miguel Angel Lopez, only 33 seconds separating the two of them. And after this one, there were also no changes in the team classification, with Astana still leading ahead of Movistar. So this was the fourth stage win for the breakaway. This time it was Ian Stannard taking the win. And then the first rider from the peloton to finish the stage was Alejandro Valverde. I missed the timing for the sprint because I wasn't really looking. Um, he started sprinting way too early, but no one else answered and he managed to get the seventh place. So he gained a few more points uh, over Primoz Roglic in the points classification. And so with no major changes in any of the classifications, let's look at stage 15. So this is going to be, in my opinion, one of the most important stages for the GC. We have four categorized climbs in this stage, and the final one, the summit finish in Santuario de la Cebo, is an HC climb. 7.9 kilometers at an average of 9.8%, a max of 15.4. So it's another one of those uh, typical La Vuelta summit finishes, a really hard climb to wrap up the stage of 153.1 kilometers. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this stage. It was supposed to be a really quiet one, but due to some falls, especially the one close to the end uh, of Alejandro Valverde, for a moment, I really thought he was going to lose some time. Then I realized that Primoz Roglic was in the same group as him. I didn't really see if he fell as well. Probably he did. So in the end, there were no gaps uh, between the GC contenders. So if you have enjoyed it, please click the like button. Also, please comment below. I would really love to hear your opinion or your predictions about what may happen still in my Love Welta. And for those who are new to my channel, feel free to check some of my other videos. And if you enjoy them, I would really appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel. The support would be really important to me. And I hope to see you all next time for stage 15 of La Vuelta 2019 in Pro Cycling Manager. Bye!